Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Snap and Grid with Box Cutter. One very quick thing before we start, if you are interested in grabbing our free PDF with shortcuts and commands for hard ups and box cutter, we created something like this for you guys. So if you have a problem with remembering shortcuts, go to our website, download the free PDF with shortcuts for hard ups and box cutter and enjoy your life. Let's just enable snap dots first and see what happens here um, when we have the default dots enabled. When you have something selected, you hold control, you will see dots appearing above your mesh. And depending on which area you're hovering over, the dots gonna shift, right? Then when you hover over a dot, you'll see that it's gonna highlight, which will basically highlight a point of interest from which you can start drawing your cut. So in our case, if I wanna start drawing here in the middle, it's gonna start drawing in the middle, and that's how you can create actually a middle um, cut in the middle of your geo. So let's draw that, press B for bevel, and you can see that the cut is, you know, dead in the middle, right? So that's how dots work. And the cool thing about dots is that they're gonna to respond to underlying geometry. So when we're gonna subdivide this mesh, you're gonna see more dots. Consequently, if I'm going to run a cut on my mesh, dots will always respond to, to the uh, points of that boolean, even though this boolean is not yet, you know, baked in. It's just a fake geometry. So I can move this because it's a live boolean, right? So I can move it here and the dots, you know, they will move with it, you see. So they're always going to be displayed in verts and in the middle of each edge and the middle of faces. Okay, so that's really, really important, right? So they, these are dots. Now the grid is a bit different. What it's going to do is going to create like an overlay, which you can increase by scrolling your mouse button. And you can just, you know, draw cuts that will snap to that grid. And you can draw cuts, you know, uh, like that uh, on your mesh, right? So that's grid. But these two options are enhanced by something called static grid and static dots, right? So let's talk about static grid first, right? So first of all, you got, you know, you can change the rotation angle and increments angles. That's one. And you can change snappy increments here as well. But let's talk about these options here, right? First of all, grid mode color. Well, that's easy. When you hold control, you can see that there's going to be a grid. So here you see that the grid is red because I'm in a cutter mode. But if I'm going to switch here to slash, my grid's going to also change color. Let's talk about grid overlay now, okay? So when I'm going to go to sound view or to graphic, you'll see that there's a grid behind me. Well, it can get a bit confusing if you're not going to turn on this option, right? Because you can see a lot of grids overlaying on one another, so you can turn it off by toggling grid overlay in side view. And the other one is actually toggling floor overlay uh, when you, you know, in perspective or orthographic, it doesn't matter, okay? So these two are important. This one is really cool because it's uh, always in front, which means let's say I have like a cut like here, let's say a really deep cut, okay? So let's switch to a cutter and cut it through. And I wanted to cut something inside, but I can't bloody see that because my grid disappears, right? So if you're gonna toggle this in front here, right? The grid's gonna be always visible, you see that? So it's gonna be always in front of that mesh, which is really cool, especially if you wanna cut stuff like this, you know, like here, uh, these kind of cuts inside of the cut, somewhere deep in the mesh. Now this one is basically making this grid a little bit more transparent when cutting. So when I start cutting, the grid gets a bit more transparent. That's all that happens uh, with the grid, right? Now let's talk about snapping dots because they're pretty cool. So let's turn off this uh, um, this grid here and let's turn off this one. And let's talk about dots. Now these are really cool, okay? So first of all, dot to dot snap. That's really awesome. Because what it will allow you to do is just delete that, get a new cube. And let's just subdivide it, all right? Twice. So I can now draw a shape and my cutter will literally snap to to these uh, to these uh, dots and when i start drawing it you know we can get a very precise cut with this and um, with the you know this sort of uh, uh grid right so you can get some really precise cuts here uh, done on this mesh okay you can get very you know sort of geometrical with it if you want to all right so that's that 
and uh, next one here is subdivision preview I have no idea what it does I can't remember and quite frankly I don't use it but it, if you guys remember let me know in comments but I generally don't freaking know what it was I'll draw is really cool because um, genuinely when you start drawing something right let me just turn it off when you draw something on a mesh so let's just grab a regular cube you're gonna draw from the middle but you can see that it actually draws in a way that it's sort of on the side of the mesh so it's not in the middle but it's kind of the left or right depending where your mouse goes right unless uh, you're going to turn this thing on and this is really cool because it will allow you to draw in the middle so if you want to you know drop a cut dead on in the middle of a sheep this is how you do it okay use the alt draw alternate which you can do you can hold out while drawing okay so hold control and then hold out while drawing right so you start drawing a shape okay and then you hold out and this is what's gonna happen if you hold shift with it you're gonna have a perfect uh, perfect square okay so you hold control you hold out and you hold shift all right that's like deep box cutting okay then you can still press B, for example, for bevel, right? And Q for quad bevel and Bob Janko, right? So you can create stuff like this, which is really, really, really cool. And normally it would take you ages to achieve something like this, right? So there you go, all right? Alignment preview. Well, when you hover over a mesh, you can actually preview which way the cutter is going to go, okay? So you have to click, uh, sort of press control and depress it and move your mouse over different faces. And it will show you which direction the cutter is going to start, you know, you're going to draw the cutter, right? So just kind of shows you which direction you're going to go, right? So that's kind of important, all right? So usually, you know, I would suggest working with the alt draw, right? This is really important and this one I use quite a lot if I need some precision cuts, okay? So that's how you work with the grid, guys, and that's how you work with dots. Now, important thing to understand is that dots will not work very well in perspective in orthographic mode okay so you really want to be in or uh, in perspective mode to work with dots and they work uh, with object view and not with view mode okay? uh, if you get any problems check your um, your orientation here that you're in a perspective and you under you know object um uh, the uh, orientation right that's important a really cool way of using these dots here uh, is with or actually we could use not the dots but we could use the grid maybe it's gonna be even better uh, let's use the grid let's scale it to do uh, in a way that's gonna actually fit our geometry here and we're gonna be in perspective mode in this object orientation okay and we're gonna change the cut here to 0 0.2 meters and I'm going to shift click this option here and I click on the quick execute. So what it will allow me to do, it will allow me to just uh, draw a shape and release. And it's going to draw the shape to exactly the same depth every single time. But I'm going to do this with the, uh, with the grid and boom. And now what I can do instead of, um, you know, um, using this kind of a setup here. So let's just, let's just turn it off if I can. There you go. I can hold control and I can double click on this grid to wherever I want, right? To repeat that cut exactly the same way as it happened on, you know, on this corner on the top left. So this double click with, with the grid, or you could do this with dots as well. It's gonna work with dots as well, very well, okay? So you can sort of use these dots to guide your, you know, guide your mouse and, I sort of make sure that they align perfectly but the grid is actually better for this you can create some cool stuff like this you see very easily right so i use this quite a lot because it allows you to cut to a specific depth when you set this laser cut depth and then align them really well without the necessity of going you know with array and sort of you know making sure that every single array has the same you know distance right um so this is really cool way of working and i use it a lot when i'm for example uh, running cuts like um, a circle cut with a bit of a taper so shift t and taper and i want to repeat it somewhere else on the mesh i'm just gonna hold control and double click and it's gonna repeat the same cut all over the mesh whatever i want with the same settings all right which is really cool right and then just don't remember when you 
perform the first cut to clean that because every time you perform a laser cut it will cut to exact the same depth so you know uh, it will not cut through anymore right if you want to cut through the mesh you want to release that but you don't really need the laser lock to be enabled or defined because you can you know do this manually you can manually you know adjust the depth of your cut right let me just uh, delete that cube because it becomes a little bit heavy let me just create a very shallow cuts uh, shallow cut here uh, like this and uh, shift T and taper and I can repeat it with double click and holding control so you know it's really cool I use it quite a lot when I'm like I said create like repeating cuts on my mesh and I can't be bothered to to clone stuff because what you can do with this is really cool what you can do with box cutter right I mean with any boolean really in blender uh, but when you create a um, boolean and you shift it to live and you go to edit mode select everything go to orthographic side view you can shift the that cut everywhere you want and you know this is going to become one cutter but you don't have to recut it manually you can just clone it but you know if you want to pre precision cuts and you have specific place when you want to when you drop a cut the double click cut is really good and it works perfectly with dots and grid so that's how I would use it, okay? Alright guys, well that's it for this one. And if anyone knows what this function does, let me know. Because I have no bloody clue. And quite frankly, I can't be bothered to check the documentation. Because I don't use it. So let me know, yeah? And if you're interested in deepening your knowledge on hard ups and box cutter, I highly recommend you check out our Blend the Bros coaching and community program where we have a ton of courses accessible to you day one, which utilize hard ups and box cutter. We got full game asset workflows, texturing courses, etc. So there's a kind of a really awesome package of courses for anyone who wants to get a bit more proficient working with blender with add-ons especially hard ups and box cutter that's it from me thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one